Hey there, friends. Welcome back. You ever heard of a green screen? Well, I'm sitting in front of one right now. And if I go like this, I've now been transported into another dimension, to a new place, anywhere that makes the video a little bit more immersive and as entertaining as I feel I can make it. I can spin myself around in a circle. I can manipulate the video in all kinds of ways. I just have to eliminate the green that is behind me. You see, this was supposed to be a Q&A video. I asked you guys quite a bit ago for your questions, and a lot of you guys were incredibly nice, and I'm incredibly excited to answer some of your questions. I meant to actually do a high-quality green screen for this, but, um... I kind of f***ed it up. Now, the first question, is it Juve or Juve? It is Juve. It's not Juve. There is actually quite a lot of issues with my old username that people would pronounce incorrectly all the time, and I understand starting it with a J can get a little confusing sometimes, especially if people come from different areas of the world, but it is pronounced Juve. One syllable, nice and easy. We like to be concise around here with our language. Describe to us who is Juve from the very beginning, and another question that kind of wraps up into the same story. How did the name Juve come about? So if you aren't familiar with it at all, I've told the story quite a few times over on uh, a few Twitch streams. My original username or gamer tag, whatever you would call it, was in full. It was Juvenalia Gaming. Now that name originally comes from a band that I played in in high school. We had a garage band. I played guitar because I'm fucking cool. You know, just get all, all the fan girls we had just would go crazy. No, we didn't have any fans at all. We just would meet up on Sundays and play covers of our favorite alternative rock bands. The lead singer of our band, he came up with the name Juvenalia. Back in, I think it was 2019, I decided to make an Instagram meme page. And it was Juvenalia Gaming, and I remember I made the logo on Snapchat. I would just repost memes, I would make my own memes, they were all horrible. I didn't even own a computer at this point. Not the most enthralling backstory to how I got started with this. I first actually started to build my initial kind of following over on TikTok, because, you know, it's a lot easier to make a 30 to 60 second video than it is what I do now on the channel, which are a lot of times 15 to 20 minute, fully edited, scripted, just all sorts of nonsense. It was very low effort and it was a lot easier for me to do to at least dip my toes in and throw some stuff out there that I thought was funny and for most of it to completely bomb and be incredibly cringe, but that's how I started. Hey Juve, got any book recommendations for my book report at school? Oh yeah, definitely. You should check out Old Yeller if you haven't. It's an incredible book. Spoiler alert. Eventually, I changed the name to just Juve four letters and that was because people that were in my twitch streams at the time they used to always shorten juvenalia into juve j-u-v they used to always say it somebody spelled it out in my twitch chat one day just j-o-o-v and i don't know why i thought it looked a little bit silly but i also thought it was much better to change my name to just one syllable and so i cut it down i changed it on every platform which for me at the time it was Kind of daunting. I was like, oh no, my fans, my fans. <laughs> but what made you want to start YouTube slash which YouTubers inspired you to start? And then an another uh, question to range scrib, what motivated you to start this channel and what keeps you motivated? So what keeps me motivated throughout it are you guys, your comments, the kind words is, I honestly, I'm taken aback sometimes, every time. Every time I upload a video now and people are immediately in the comments, it is the most humbling and incredible experience to see people just excited for a new release. When I'd been making videos for so long and had, you know, a small number of people that would watch them. And honestly, throughout the year and a half, when I did have a very small amount of people watching my videos, those were the ones that kept me motivated. You know, the, the people that were watching the channel when I had sometimes 30, 70, 100 views in the first week of a video being posted. Honestly, I, I can't thank the people that watch the channel from the very start enough. I've always actually really wanted to do content online, but the YouTubers that really inspired me to start, there's honestly one, and that's Call Me Kevin. Hey there friends, how's it going? My name is Kevin. Call Me Kevin has been probably the single biggest inspiration for me always wanting to do content. Back when I was, I believe, 14 years old, and I think Kevin's two years older than me, so he would have been 16 at the time. He did a series of videos for Machinima, if you remember Machinima back in the day, uh, and they were called How to Annoy People, and it was Search and Destroy Call of Duty. What's Call of Duty? You're flying you're flying out. Out. Oh no, this is Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, Call, Call of, Duty, of Duty, Modern, Modern Warfare, Warfare 2. 2. No, no, it says in the box, I got it right here, Modern Warfare 2. Fucking Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2! No, 
It's not. It's I, I'm looking different. at the box right now. It's Modern Warfare 2. It got to a point where me and my friends, we would go into search and destroy lobbies and I would retell the same jokes from his videos <laughs> and try to get people to get annoyed with me. And it almost always worked. Every now and then people did call me up. I even changed my gamer tag on Xbox to Team Leader, which was the gamer tag he used in a lot of these videos. He's always playing a character in a lot of his stuff too and creating funny characters. And that's always really been what I've kind of wanted to do. And I think it's really relevant if you watch a lot of the videos on the channel where that inspiration comes from, because I am always trying to tell a story or create characters and just overall kind of just have fun with the stuff that I do. What made you decide to do challenge videos? Also love your content, keep up the great work. Glitchcafter, thank you so much for the compliment and for the kind question. What made me decide to do challenge videos? Uh, this is hard to do. <laughs> this, is, this is much harder to do than I thought it would be. I think it kind of clicked in my head that, you know, on YouTube, there are just some things that are a little bit more interesting for people to click on. And a lot of times taking a game that people love and doing something incredibly stupid with it is something that people enjoy. Okay, we had two people ask about Mickey D and how I got to know Mickey D. So back when I first found Mickey's channel, I think Mickey was around 3000 subscribers and I was around 5000 subscribers at the time because I had a YouTube short video do very well. N not to brag, I felt really cool having more subscribers than a channel that I knew would blow mine away eventually. I noticed that he was doing a lot of Morrowind and I loved Morrowind as a kid one of the first games I ever played and grew up with. If you go way back on my channel, I did a Morrowind multiplayer video. I remember reaching out to Mickey over Twitter. He didn't have his DMs open. And I messaged him on Twitter and I was like, hey, we're doing Morrowind multiplayer and we'd love to have you join us. And I got ghosted. <laughs> I got ghosted. <laughs> He's been a fantastic friend and awesome for helping me just understand YouTube a lot more and get the channel off the ground. He's always believed that our channel would, you know, eventually catch some momentum and i'm honestly forever grateful for him being a good friend do you want to do content creation full time i honestly i couldn't answer that question right now i, I really do enjoy my job outside of youtube and streaming um that keeps me satisfied and it keeps me having fun while i do content because i don't make content for money i never have uh, I do it for the clout and the followers and to be incredibly cool. Is what you are making right now what you always wanted to make on YouTube? Actually, no. What I always wanted to make on YouTube is kind of what I alluded to earlier when I talked about the Call Me Kevin videos where he was annoying people in lobbies by acting like a total airhead. There's some older videos on my channel you can check out. The GTA roleplay stuff uh, for sure and uh, First Class Trouble, I believe is the name of the game. Those were videos of me playing with randoms in game chat and having a lot of fun just goofing around and trying to play an idiotic character. Do you guys have rocket ships in your Resident room Unit 1, online. I'm gonna take a wild stab and guess you're a furry. I am not aware of what a furry is, nor is a response programmed for that. Target symbol. Target. Can you describe? Robot, describe symbol. It is a target symbol. Ah, oh, I'm a dumbass, I got you. It is okay. I have worked with many humans who are much stupider than you. I don't like this robot. He's a piece of shit. I said many that... Wait, did I say smarter than you? I meant... <laughs> Those were the videos that I always wanted to do. Now I've become much more passionate, though, about kind of scripting and writing jokes and scripting a video and trying to put together a little bit more cohesive of an experience. And I think I enjoy these a little bit more than what I always wanted to do at the start. Or what got you into making YouTube videos? Also keep up the great work. Your videos are ridiculously entertaining. You have a very charismatic and joyful personality that makes your videos very fun to watch. I already kind of answered this question earlier. I just wanted to read out that nice compliment. Thank you very much, Jalapeno Mayo. What was the most mind blowing thing to wrap your head around since starting your channel? Also, please keep up the wonderful work you do. It has been an excitingly wild ride watching your content. Smiley face. Jesus. Could that's the mind blowing thing. How nice, just how nice some people are is the mind blowing thing. Do your friends and family know about you making YouTube? Actually, yes. And they've known pretty much since I started doing it. Will you continue your Skyrim journey as a chicken? Yes, I, we will continue that Skyrim journey as a chicken. I just wanna give it some rest between each episode and work on a few other projects. But we do have some fun new tools that we have modded in for the chicken for episode three. What is the future of this channel? Funny challenges, impossible challenges, trying out mods, whatever you do, keep doing, cause we love it. I think the future of the channel is mainly just funny challenges, 
kind of arbitrary goals. I like setting up stupid goals. You know, I like asking a question, can you play? A, because it's a stupid question. <laughs> can you play? Yes, the, I, the answer is obviously yes. I just think YouTube for some reason likes can you to lead off of a video. I, I do think that there's something fun about setting a really dumb goal and the main crux of the content is the story that's told in between. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey on this channel. And like I usually say, it's my channel, I can do whatever the f Have you ever thought about sometimes maybe slightly changing the format of your channel, less challenges and more actual gameplay? That's kind of what the channel was before. If you watch a lot of the videos from before, you know, the first White Run video, a lot of my videos were just strictly, you know, my face came in the corner and me telling dumb jokes with some light editing in between. I think on this main channel, we're always going to try and keep it to a challenge with a specific goal, stuff that's a little bit more highly involved and high effort than what I was doing before. Possibly more variety on a second channel. I'm still not sure trying to work all that out and wondering how I can fit it into the current workflow that I have on the channel now. Any chance we get a legit playthrough of anything? Most likely not. I've actually thought of doing a video style where I play through the entire game on stream and typically keep it to, you know, those single player shoot 'em ups and beat 'em ups that take six to 10 hours to beat. But I don't think right now I have any plans to do a full on playthrough of something. That's not what the channel I think is about. Will you be playing some quest mods on the channel in the future? I don't know if I wanna go back to just covering a mod and just covering the mod as the video anymore. I like sort of the pace that we're at now. May we get a return of Jesh? I will never stop asking. P.S. Thank you for the wonderful things you give us. And then you point a gun at me and you demand I give you Jesh. Uh, Rin's Gravity, thank you for the kind words. I would love a chance to bring Jesh back. As fun as those videos were and as formative as they were for me as a content creator, uh, I don't see him coming back anytime in the future. But, you know, no cards are ever off the table. Maybe I'll find time to squeeze him in. I had an entire season two planned of where I was gonna go, what the plan was gonna be, what the side stories and goal of the whole season would be. But for now, unfortunately, I don't see it in the near future, but never say never. Do you think you'll ever do Oblivion Area Locks? I, I think I do wanna do the Imperial City at some point, but that's a massive project and that'll likely be the biggest video on the channel in terms of just how long it will take and the scale of it. Are there any games you wanna play with a challenge but haven't got to? I've always wanted to get Hitman involved on the channel a little bit more as well as Red Dead Redemption 2, which I'm thankful we finally were able to get on the channel. Dark Souls series as well as Elden Ring really intrigue me, but I'm not much of a Souls fan. I actually, Elden Ring is the first Souls game I've really totally dove into. Right now, the main focus is on Skyrim and Fallout. There is a huge crossover between the fan bases and those are the games that I grew up loving. So yeah, maybe in the future we will work more hard challenges or just ridiculous challenges from other games onto the channel. How about a VOD channel for those who can't afford to watch the streams? Like I mentioned earlier about having a second channel, um, I really do want to make a VOD channel very soon. As long as there is an interest in a VOD channel, I think I would love it. So please, if you do want me to have a VOD channel, I could upload the full Twitch streams on a separate channel. I'd, I'd love to do that because not every stream gets turned into a video on the channel. When is Fallout Tactics? Sooner than you think. <laughs> but please stop asking me about Fallout Tactics. I think I'm just interested what kind of stuff you like to do outside of streaming, or what is your favorite non Elder Scrolls game? Hey, 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 that's two questions. You only get one. What do I do outside of streaming? I'm going to be honest, at this point, not a whole lot. <laughs> uh, almost all of my free time and energy outside of creating content for the channel, out of recording, uh, and, you know, I do game, like I just said earlier, I've been playing Elden Ring on my own. I have not had a ton of free time. I like to go to the gym every now and then. Uh, I do play guitar. I mentioned I was in a band, I'm cool. You know, I like to go out with my friends and get a drink. I'm a big sports fan. I'm a massive sports fan. I went to university at uh, Iowa, so I'm a Hawkeye. Massive Iowa Hawkeye fan. I hope they can make a run in this year's NCAA tournament. I am a massive, massive Chicago White Sox fan. So it's in the Baseball is my favorite sport to watch on TV. There's just nothing like playoff baseball. I'm also, unfortunately, a Chicago Bears fan, so things have been miserable for me in that department. And uh, yeah, I just love sports, always want to talk about sports. And I have become a much better sports fan, I think, over the last few years to where I'm not as much of a throw the remote and maybe put a hole in the wall angry sports fan. I've kind of just accepted 
I just like watching sports. What were you doing before YouTube? Where do you see your channel going within this year? Love the content, so glad I could find the channel. I started doing YouTube and I started doing content and streaming in general because I was stuck in this rut of go to work, come home, play the video game, buy whatever battle pass I was working on at the time, do the daily challenge grind of whatever battle pass I was working on, go to sleep, wake up, go to work, come back. I was going through this endless grind of just nothing, you know? I, and it was like, oh, a new game came out. Oh, well, here's the battle pass. I can get back on the same hamster wheel. Before I did start YouTube and content, I really had no social life or purpose. It was uh, not fun to say the least. And those first six months of learning how to make content those weren't fun either. <laughs> Are you making a living off of your videos or do you have a job on the side? I actually really appreciate a couple of these questions that assume YouTube is my full job. Uh, it, it's not, YouTube is a side gig. I do have a full-time job. At what point are you going to quit your current full-time job and make YouTube your job and do it 24 seven? I think I would be comfortable going full-time with YouTube if I averaged between five to 10 million views per month. And the most I've ever done in a month right now is I think 1.3. Still blows my mind, still incredibly thankful for it. But in order to be comfortable making that jump, I think that's where I'd have to be around. What are your PC specs? Uh, I'm actually not much of a PC hardware buff. I have a pre-build. I actually have the NZXT uh, Streaming Pro PC. I think I have a 3060 graphics card and I'm not sure what CPU I have. I, I got a computer, all right? I got a computer processing unit and I got a graphics card. That's what I got. <laughs> Do I have a strategy to growing my YouTube channel? Really the main advice that I have for people, if people do ask me about YouTube, I tell them, make 100 videos. You'll either fall in love and you'll make 100 videos. You'll get to 100 videos if you love it, or you'll quit. And if you quit before making 100 videos, then I don't think you fell in love with it. And that's okay. Not everybody has to fall in love with it. Not everybody can fall in love with it. It's completely different for everyone else. But I do think if you love what you do and you're constantly trying to get better, then you know, it'll, it'll, it'll come. People will recognize the effort. People will recognize, you know, your personality and who you are. As long as it's obvious that you do love what you do, you can't fake it. Ever considered doing a Skyrim challenge where you beat the game normally? Also love the content, keep it up. Thank you, Mad Lad. Uh, no. Hi Juve, I enjoy your unique challenge videos, no questions. Thanks for something to watch. Moja? I don't have an answer because you didn't have a question. You're supposed to ask me a f no question other than how the hell did it take me so long to find your channel? Vaughn, I don't, hey, I don't know either. All right, what was up with you? What were you watching before, huh? That's a problem. That's a problem we can't have. Not a question, but I'm a new subscriber and I just wanted to say you have some genuinely unique ideas for your challenges. Your content hooked me in, but your personality is why I'm staying. Keep up the good work. Once again, not a question. What is going on here, huh? Assuming you can remember, what was the first mod you ever downloaded? Probably Sky UI. I know that's such a cop-out answer because it's just a basic mod that everyone uses, even though in my videos, part of my challenges is to use basic Skyrim uh, UI instead of a modded version. Oh, also DDM, that's our resident channel modder. Fantastic modder, he's just amazing. DDM, we love you. Everybody thank DDM in the comments. Only fans win. I'm sure a lot of us would support you and your feet. You must not be a true fan if you haven't already found my OnlyFans. How does a circuits resistor actually work? By uh, saying no. If you could have a snowball fight with any Skyrim character, who would it be and why? Karstag, so I could prove that I am the best snowballer in Skyrim. Can you beat Skyrim without leaving Helgen? No, in fact, you can't. Do you prefer regular or spicy salsa? Spicy, 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 all day long, spicy. I actually really enjoy spicy food. I'm a big, uh, big spicy guy. It's also fun to say spice. Spice, spice, spice. I like saying spice. Are you okay? How's your day been? Honestly, today's good. Uh, I'm back from my vacation in Vegas. I actually had my first stream a couple hours ago that we recorded for, uh, I don't even know if that challenge is gonna work out, but we'll see. But no, I'm feeling good. I appreciate it, rock and roll. How many pigeons could Nazim take in a fight? Hopefully more than 50, because at that point, if he's fighting that many pigeons, 15 to 20 of them are bound to take a shit on him. What's your opinion on pineapple with pizza? Pineapple on pizza is an absolute no-go. I, that's, why? Why, there's too much, there's too much of this putting fruit with like 
things that just don't need fruit. Absolutely not. Should not be a thing. What's the matter with you guys? Even Gordon Ramsay says so. But people also get out of control. They put cranberry on, on turkey? The fuck? Cranberries in a chicken salad? No! Unnecessary! We're not mixing fruit with meat. Except for like orange chicken, maybe. You get to the Cloud District very often. Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't. God, we need Starfield to come out so we can get some new jokes. <laughs> we need, we need, we need a new game. Bethesda, please, for fuck's sake. Have you ever skateboarded? Actually, I have. I went through a poser phase when I was like 11 or 12. Like I got a sick like beanie and uh, my neighbor had a skateboard. It was, I think it was because Skate 3 came out and we were all playing skate. <laughs> We'd been skateboarding for like a week and a half and the collective was like, we're going to X Games. Yeah, no, it's happening. No, it's happening, dad. I'm freaking going. Do you want to play Fallout 76 with me? I'm going to be honest. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to play Fallout 76 with anybody, though, so I'm not calling you out. This isn't to call out people who enjoy Fallout 76. Don't worry, I put plenty of hours into the game. Did Lee Harvey Oswald act with a clone? I don't know. I don't know. Are you more of a bagel guy or a donut guy? This is a really tough one. I absolutely love them both, but donut, donut, donut. You get me a cake donut with, you know, the, the maple glaze right on top. Maple donuts. Oh my God. Oh. Is Coda cannon? Yes. What is the taste of a tractor? Yes. Why is the chicken in the chicken Skyrim video so hot? Yes. Just curious, what are your thoughts on the Mass Effect trilogy? Have you ever played it? If so, what are your favorite things about it? Favorite characters, romance, moments, or even just your favorite ME game from the trilogy? So the only one of the trilogy I've actually played is Mass Effect 2. I know that's strange. Uh, thankfully, I played the best one in the entire series. I got the worst ending possible. I got the entire crew killed, spoiler alert. Um, my favorite romance in the game, not gonna lie, is a 14 year old growing boy, Miranda Lawson. She, you know, she confirmed my suspicions that I was straight. What game is your favorite guilty pleasure? Once a year, it feels like I go through a love affair with either Star Wars The Old Republic or Elder Scrolls Online. What are your favorite aspects of Tez games that you hope are given a focus in Elder Scrolls 6? I think this is a fairly easy question because what Elder Scrolls does right, I think it does better than any open world RPG game. And that's just the sheer sense of freedom, exploration, and, you know, the idea that it puts in your head when the game starts that you can go anywhere and kind of do anything. Obviously, that's not 100% true. There's some limitations to the games. But looking at Skyrim as, as the, the example, I, I think that no game has ever matched the scale of stepping out of the tutorial and now becoming and doing whatever you want. And I hope that that once again gets nailed in Elder Scrolls 6, because I think in Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim, that feeling has been aced. What was the hardest challenge you have ever done in a video game before? When I did Bleak Falls Barrow as a slaughterfish, that was immensely hard. I don't know if you guys have seen that video, it's a bit older, and I don't think that my editing style has aged very well on that video, but that challenge was holy shit hard. What are your top three favorite NPCs from your top three favorite games, and why are all of them filth, filth, fifth regair, I hope I can help. Necromancy may be legal in Cyrodiil, but few will openly admit to practicing it now that the Mages Guild has banned it. Farewell. May you rest in peace. I'm not gonna lie, I, th I think all of them are. It's the funniest Oblivion clip of all time. What are your favorite games besides Elder Scrolls and Fallout games? My favorite game of all time outside of those is Red Dead Redemption 2. I also would give an honorable mention to the original Mercenaries game. You ever played Mercenaries? Can we be friends? What happened to that series? Bring it back. We need Merc Mercenaries 2 was even pretty good. When did you first play Skyrim and have you ever completed the game normally? Hey, come on, eh? Guys, what are we doing here? Of course I've beaten the game normally. It's 10 years old. So I first played Skyrim on launch day, 11, 11, 11. I remember my mommy picked me up from school. I was a little freshman in high school. Uh, total nerd, total dork. Um, super excited to play Skyrim after I was a huge fan of Oblivion and played that one a crap load. Uh, she took me to, I think it was either Play and Trade or Game Crazy. Forgot the name of the local store, but 
She had to buy it for me because it was rated M and I was still too young to buy rated M games. Is there a game you like that everyone else hates? There is a game that I don't really like that everyone else loves. And this might get me a lot of hate. I've never been a big fan of The Witcher 3. I know, I know, I know. Everyone calm down, calm down, <laughs> relax. Relax. I don't have really any personal issues with it. I think my main issue with The Witcher 3 is kind of how there's like question marks on the map and the way you explore that game is just by going to question marks. I don't know, maybe there's more to it and maybe I completely missed the ball. What were some of the first video games you ever played? A ton, a million. A uh, Siphon Filter, Crash Bandicoot. I mentioned Mercenaries earlier. That was a favorite of mine as a kid. Jet Set Radio Future, I think was the first game I ever played on my original Xbox at age five. And you guys have heard the soundtrack to this game on the channel quite a few times before. Toy Story 2, the movie licensed game, I had that on PC. It was one of the first games I ever remember having any recollection of. And a funny story about that game. So my brother is seven years older than I am. So at the time he was 12 and I was five. I was stuck on, I think the water level in that game where you're in the alleyways. I think alleys and gullies is the name of the level. I wanted his help to try and beat a part that I kept getting stuck on. My 12 year old brother comes to the rescue and he can't beat it either. He gets so upset that he ejects the disc out of our computer and frisbees it at the wall. It shatters into a million fucking pieces. I'm crying. He's doing the, oh no, 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 it's fine. We can fix it, we can fix it. We duct tape the CD back together. It shattered into like five pieces. We duct tape it back together and we try to jam it into the disc tray. <laughs> We're jamming a CD into the disc tray covered in like thick duct tape. Remember, I remember trying to loop it around the inside of the CD. Mother. And I'm sitting there like, please. Oh my God, please work. Like, well, <laughs> like we had just invented the atom bomb. Like, oh my God, is this actually going to work? It didn't work. I never got it replaced. And I didn't tell on him because I wanted to be loyal. In the Elder Scrolls Saga, what is your favorite game? Skyrim. I know it's kind of a controversial take these days, but I think far and away Skyrim is the best Elder Scrolls game in almost every aspect. I just, I, I love Skyrim. <laughs> like I love all the other games too. Don't get me wrong. I love Morrowind. I love Oblivion. I just, I think the fan base gets a little just too toxic when discussing their favorite games. They all do awesome things. They all do things wrong. I don't know. It's a, it's a flawed, incredible series with the best open worlds ever made. Just my, in my opinion, that is. Favorite Fallout companion? Easy question, Dogmeat. Dogmeat is the most iconic Fallout companion. I, I always, when I play a Fallout game, I never take a human companion with. I always take Dogmeat. Dogmeat and a Wanderer, to me that's Fallout. What got you into Elder Scrolls? This is a sick question because when I was, I think in fifth grade, so I would have been about 12, the same age my brother was when he absolutely obliterated the best game of all time, Toy Story 2, Blockbuster was a thing. If you guys remember Blockbuster, it was where you would go to rent games. And I used to always go in there where my dad would get a couple of movies for the weekend. I would usually pick up a game. And I noticed that there was a game on the rack called The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. I thought that one of the characters on the cover had really cool looking armor. I think he was on the back of the cover and top of my head, if I can remember correctly, he was wearing an iron helmet. I remember renting the game, taking it back home. Like most people, when they first played Morrowind without the internet, you know, to access back then for guides, had no clue what was going on and got repeatedly smashed, but I still fell in love with it. And then when I had to return it and my dad wanted me to pick up a new game, I put it on the shelf and picked Morrowind back up and rented Morrowind again. And I went back and I rented Morrowind, I believe three times in total before eventually just going, Dad, I don't know what's going on in this game, but it's the best game I've ever played in my entire life, and I need you to buy this for me. How's it going, Muzzer? It's going great. You know why it's going great? Because that's the last question that I'm gonna answer for this video. Thank you guys so much. I'm sorry I couldn't get to every single question. Seriously, thank you guys so much. It's, it's honestly been incredible to see how many people have enjoyed the channel. How many people have stopped by the lives? You guys are the best. <laughs> I can't even describe it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.